Hello and welcome! My name is Eva, another video, another day, again, Plum Shop. So continuation, I think this will be one before last video, well at least when it comes to review, because of course Glam Shop won't disappear on my channel, don't you worry. <laughs> Today I'm going to of course use collection Glam Shop and Zmalowana Polish YouTuber, beauty YouTuber um, and another Loose foil. This time I choose foil kaleidoscope. Uh, last time in my last video I asked you for advices about application and I have one, <laughs> so I'm going to try this technique today. In the last video I finished reviewing this palette, so ulubieńcy palette full of matte shades, but since I still review some Glam Shop foils and also shimmers, I'm going to use this palette again and still. <laughs> I actually planned to use green today, but the green one is something like glitter shimmer, so today I'm going to use turbo pigments. Why is that? Because the technique I have for you today is to apply this loose foil on shimmer. So first I'm going to apply shimmer and then I'm going to apply loose foil on this shimmer. And this way apparently the texture shouldn't be so visible, the surface should be more smooth. We'll test that. <laughs> And before I start, I need to clarify something, because I realized that recently. This thing, I call it spongy applicator. This is not sponge. <laughs> this is silicone. But I absolutely forgot that sponge applicators was a thing. Sponge applicators, I call them spongy applicators. Because actually, this tip is squishy and soft, but it's not like true, true sponge. This is silicone and silicone applicators are great to apply loose foils. That's little clarification because English is meh, <laughs> so it's not a sponge, it's silicone. I said all what I wanted, so now I'm going to apply my P. Louise base, zoom you in and we can start. I'm starting as always with matte beige. I'm taking shade Czyścik, which means cleaner and I'm applying it under my brow. This area, when it's set, it is just blending towards my brow will be much more easier and much more safer. Now I'm taking shade Ideal. So Ideal, and I'm taking pretty big fluffy brush, I'm going to contour my eye, so I'm going to apply it above my crease. When I was starting playing with makeup, I was like, what for is this beige eyeshadow? Why I am even bothered by it? It only takes place in the palette where there could be a better, a cooler shade. Well, how much I was wrong. Right now I can't imagine myself not using beige eyeshadow. Now I'm taking shade LOL and I'm applying it in my outer corner. Starting today's makeup a little bit differently, but whatever. Of course, tapping and tap scratch moves, my favorite ones, and I'm blending with gentle tapping this pink shade onto this peachy brown shade, this transition shade. And also, I'm taking this shade a little bit on my lower eyelid still very close to outer corner. Now I'm going back to the brush I used for this transition shade and I'm blending this outer corner area and I gently make this winged shape, gently. Now I'm taking shade Kobiecy, so feminine, and I'm taking it on my lower eyelid. I'm going, of course, to connect it with this gorgeous pink. Like, this pink is really, really gorgeous. And, of course, this isn't the end. That's why I'm not applying this shade in my inner corner. Only the middle. 
of my lower eyelid. Now I'm taking shade Ptish, so puff cake and I love this shade. It's beautiful, like mustard yellow, but it's not dark yellow shade. A very gorgeous pastel. And pretty much pigmented too. Of course I'm applying it also on this shade I have on the middle of my eyelid and I'm going back to my brush I used for this shade. Here it is, because on this side I have this pink. So of course I'm not adding more color, I only use what I have on my brush. Just blend these two shades together. That's it. I am a huge fan of what's going on on my lower eyelid. Again, I'm taking shade Ptish, so this gorgeous mustard shade. This brush is very, very flexible and it's because it's not thick. It doesn't have a lot of hairs and hairs are pretty long. And I'm going to use it to very gently warm this area, so warm this transition brown shade. So as you can tell, I'm applying this yellow mustard shade on and a little bit above this transition shade and because I don't have a lot of eyeshadow on the brush and also this brush is so flexible, this pigmentation isn't so obvious, it's just like a little cloud of color. And of course, if you are beginner in makeup, you don't need brush like this. I seriously bought this brush like <laughs> at least a few years after I start my makeup adventure. And you can do this effect with any different brush, just take very, very small amount of uh, shade that you want to use. So for example, I show you how to do it. Let's say that you have just blending brush. You take this yellow shade and then on your hand just try to get rid of most of the pigmentation and use what you have on your brush. So you're just using dirty brush. Exactly the same as I'm using when I blend two shades together, when I'm not adding more and more color. And you're going to achieve very similar, just little cloud of color. So you don't need brush like this at all. And now with the same brush, I'm going to take this shade, so shade Kobiecy, this one, and I'm going to apply it in my inner part of this makeup, so in my favorite triangle where I like to smudge colors, so between inner corner, beginning of my brow, and let's say the arch. Of course, at any time, if you wish to, you can go back to your matte beige and blend edges close to your brow, but also this in outer corner with your matte beige. We are done here with mattes, time for shimmers. First, I'm taking shade Fochmistrz, and I think the best translation for the shade Fochmistrz is the master of sulk. This is of course turbo pigment and I can see that in the camera it looks like orange, but in the packaging it's more pinkish. <laughs> so it's it's pretty um, duo even multi-chrome turbo pigment. I'm going to apply it on my lower eyelid. Although, yes, it's a little shame because on my lower eyelid the blending is stunning. I'm not going to be modest. I'm going to apply it though very close to my lashes and maybe I'm not going to like pack it into one place. So maybe still the blending beneath will be visible. So right now I'm treating it more like a topper than real eyeshadow. Because, like I say, I don't want to hide this pretty nice blending and in the same time this shade has gorgeous particles. And yes, I have a fallout, unfortunately, and it's because I'm trying to get only those particles. 
<laughs> so instead of just massage like I always do, uh, g glitter shades, metallics or stuff into my eyelid, I, I tap. So the fallout is inevitable in this situation. And on my upper eyelid I'm taking shade Laleczka. You can translate it as a little doll. And I'm applying it on my upper eyelid as I said I will. I'll help myself with the finger, it's stunning shade, a little bit transparent. And I'm going back to this dark pink to cover edges. And now it's time to add something extra to this makeup. So first of all, no exceptions, I'm going to apply NYX Glitter Primer, otherwise this foil won't stick to my eyelid at all. And now with this applicator, silicone, but I call it spongy, but it's not a sponge, I'm taking some of this foil and let's apply it. Well, this foil definitely has smaller flakies so it will look more like a glass shards, but maybe that's okay. I'm trying to remove the sieve. This is dangerous. There we go. Removing the sieve is definitely not the greatest idea and pretty dangerous. And yes, I have too much flying foil right now here, but at least the application is quicker and this foil is pretty, pretty beautiful. It has shift between pink, orange, gold and even green. It's very, very pretty. And I think that the texture indeed isn't so much visible. So the idea of application on shimmer is pretty good idea. Thank you so much. I'm going to test this look for a couple of hours and see if something will crease because I am very curious and just let you know in comment section down below. In pinned comment, I'm going to tell you if something creased or not. I'm going back once again to this dark pink, dark pink, just pink, to cover the edges. What I want to add to this makeup is this shade, this one, this is shade Przebłysk, so it can be translated as super or awesome glimmer, uh, but I want to apply it in my inner corner, so I'm going to do it after I do my face, so after I apply concealer. Uh, but you're going to see how it looks like uh, on close-ups, on footages that I have always at somewhere at the end of my videos, so don't worry. Right now, of course, I have a foil everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to take care of that and I want to apply eyeliner. I don't remember the last time I applied eyeliner so why not today? And by the way I have on my channel tutorial how to apply eyeliner and techniques for a wing for hooded eyes so um, if you want to see then here is this video. Let's do it. First I'm going to try to make a wing. I don't want pretty long wing, this one is sufficient and then as much symmetrical on the other eye. Ah, it's okay. Let's say that it's okay. And now from the tip towards the eye. And here, very thin line. There's no need for thick eyeliner. Especially if you have hooded eyes or small eyes. Like thick eyeliner here on the middle should be pretty big no for you. Because if this line here will be thick, then when you 
open your eyes, you won't see your eyelid. It will be just all black. I haven't done eyeliner for so long, I almost forgot how to do it. Of course they are not even, like, at all. I haven't done eyeliner for so long and also the technique is awful. <laughs> I can see it in my hooded eyes that my outer corners are big no-no. How long I haven't applied my eyeliner that I did it so poorly. Wow. Whatever. It happens. Like, not every single makeup on this channel should be perfect. Everyone have bad days and also sometimes your ideas are not super good when you do them. <laughs> they were good only in your mind and that's fine like we are not perfect i am not perfect so i think it's good to show you here on this channel that my makeups also not every time are beautiful perfect and done with good techniques <laughs> it happens i'm going to apply lashes and i choose peachy pie by unicorn cosmetics so my favorite ones and I'll be back with, well, finishing steps, let's say. Let's continue, let's finish this makeup. I applied lashes, like I said, I will. And do my face, contour my face on my waterline is beige pencil. And also I have a lot of fine foil here. <laughs> and also the foil is in my hair. It's the sieve. Don't remove the sieve. <laughs> now I'm going to finish eye makeup. So I'm going to apply this shade, shade Przebłysk, in my inner corner. This very much reminds me of uh, this glitter from the newest Nabla palette. Glimmer Light palette. The shine is very, very similar. Um, there's a lot of very similar uh, particles. But, of course, this palette has more bigger chunks of glitter and this palette is just very small little particles of glitter and just like eyeshadow's base, let's say, it's a topper, glittery topper. For sure it sticks much better than uh, Nabla glitters because Nabla glitters are just glitters and this is after all like just glitter eyeshadow, it's something different. So now it's time for blush. I think the best blush for this makeup will be Milani Luminoso, so this gorgeous peachy shade. And I'm applying it here, so on tops of my cheekbones. I just like to apply it here, although you can apply it even to this point, so more here or here. It depends what shape of your face you want to achieve. And actually, I haven't planned two videos about face makeup. One about base, so you know, foundation, um, concealer, powder, this stuff, and the other one about contouring. So, contour powders, bronzers, blushes and highlighters. But I have to... <laughs> I have to say that if you expect that I'm going to tell you how to contour yourself, then I'm not going to. Because in makeup there is a rule to achieve, you know, the most oval face possible. But in, but in my opinion, it's when it's good rule for, you know, professional makeup artists when they uh, do makeup on some models, then in like normal everyday makeup, there is no point to believe in this rule. Why? Because I changed my makeup techniques when it comes to my face and place of application, the products, since I started my makeup adventure at least three or four times. And it depends what I wanted to achieve, how I want my face to present, the shape of it and so on. So I will rather say that you should just look for your perfect uh, application of products because for now I like to apply blush from here to here, but I like to apply blush from here to here. <laughs> so it just depends 
what you want to achieve, what you like. The best example is contouring like with contour powders because women should contour face like this and men like this. But this is the rule that I didn't follow at all and I really wanted to uh, control my face like men and uh, I know a lot of women that like to control face this way so listen in makeup there's only one rule there is no rules do what you like and what you feel is the best for you I'm going to ask my highlighter use Skin glazing by Nabla. This one is Amnesia, this one is Ozone. I'm going to mix them together because Amnesia is too dark, unfortunately, for me. But it's pretty. But it's too dark. But it's pretty. So when I will record such a video about contouring, about blush, highlighter and stuff, I can give you examples how you can apply these products. How to make, for example, something more visible or less visible, but <laughs> I can't suggest you what you should do. At least I think I shouldn't. And instead of the lipstick, I think that I want to use lip gloss because this um, foil is a little bit also like transparent in a way, let's say. So I think that lip gloss will be a great idea. And for this, I choose lip gloss by Nabla, of course, Shine Fury. This is Taxi Glove color. Yeah, I think it will be all right. last two steps that I am sometimes forgetting about uh, is lower lash mascara and brow gel. I always leave it at the end because it's after powdery stuff. So sometimes I do it before lipstick, sometimes after the lipstick, but <laughs> for sure not before highlighter. This way this powder that maybe is on my brows or on my lashes, I just can brush it off with brow gel and and also mascara this way this applicator gets dirty it's obvious so of course inside this packaging there's a lot of glitter powder and and a lot of different stuff but so far as i use it only on myself there's no problem with that and lower lashes i also leave this step at the end there was time when I was applying mascara on my lower lashes and the same time I was applying mascara on my upper lashes and then when I was using concealer under my eyes well, guess what? <laughs> Either my lashes get dirty with concealer or my mascara transfer under my eye on still wet concealer not recommended <laughs> This is the finished makeup. I hope you like it. Unfortunately, this shade I applied on my upper eyelid is not super visible because I applied this foil on this turbo pigment, but at least we saw how this gorgeous turbo pigment looks like and I think it's stunning and I'm going of course to use it in some future videos from this palette the only shade still untested is this green so this will be in the next video and of course in the next video i'm going to test the last 
foil, loose foil that remained to test from the glam shop and that will be end of the glam shop adventures at least when it comes to review because I'm going obviously to use glam shop on this channel it's not like I'm going to review something and then keep it in my drawers only for me <laughs> This is not the way this channel works. So about today's technique of application this loose foil, so far I love it. Indeed, I can see that the texture isn't so obvious like previously, but I'll see if everything will be fine and still nothing will crease. Why? Because after all now I have two layers there, so I have shimmer and then I have loose foil instead of only loose foil, so I'm going to wear this makeup for a while and in pinned comment down below I'm going to tell you how it will look like after some hours if something will crease or maybe break we'll see so far i really like this technique um yeah it's pretty fun i think in the next video i'm going to apply uh, loose foil with this technique again because the next foil i have to test is blue coral and this is like between green and blue and purple so i'm going to experiment a little bit with these gorgeous shimmers and also with that foil. <laughs> so that will be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and if so don't forget about your precious like and as always I love you very very much and I see you soon. Bye!